We're here at Dunwich Cemetery today and I'm going to be talking about tuberculosis. The graveyards are testament to the frequency of tuberculosis. And over the centuries, it has affected more than 25% of the population. It goes back to the days of the pharaohs. They had tuberculosis then. And it was only up until the discovery of the antibiotics to treat the bacteria that the figures started to go down. Tuberculosis is spread through a droplet infection and when the person who has it, who is a carrier, coughs, spits, speaks or sneezes, then the air around them becomes infectious. A little like something else we know about today. Here lies Ed Power, a victim of tuberculosis or consumption as it's also known and he died in a benevolent asylum. Um, he's one of very many, but most of them, their graves are unmarked because they really didn't have the money or the funds at that stage. Here lies Rutland Manners, a son of this country and a hero. He was sent as cannon fodder to the Somme, also Belgium, to those filthy, disgusting trenches that were basically open graves themselves. And when he was there fighting desperately, he contracted tuberculosis. He came back to Australia. He survived the terrible battles, but he was very disabled with um, tuberculosis. You can imagine from the terrible conditions that they'd suffered over there. And he was admitted to a couple of hospitals and infirmaries before he came to the benevolent asylum. And he died here, no doubt he was from the consumption camp. There was a, an isolated area for the people with TB and here he lies. Okay. Now consumption was called many things. It was called the white plague. It was called tuberculosis, of course. It was called phthisis scrofula, the wasting disease. Of course, tuberculosis was no respecter of titles or status, and everyone was vulnerable to this terrible disease. From the royalty, there were judges that died of it, there were lawyers, and here we have Dr. Smith, who was the medical superintendent of the Benevolent Asylum for 15 years. He fell victim to tuberculosis and I would strongly suggest that so did his two wives, Agnes and Matilda, two sisters. He married the Jardine sisters, not all at once, one after the other. And they were part of the notorious Jardine family from North Queensland. Um, the cattle barons and, and business people. So poor old Patrick Smith and the young man in the grave beside him, another victim to tuberculosis. The cause of tuberculosis is mycobacterium tuberculosis. And the symptoms are fever, night sweats, weight loss, and blood-stained sputum with a chronic, chronic cough. The, the strange thing developed in Victorian days, a strange aura around tuberculosis was very common, and the appearance of the sufferers seemed to coincide with what was a very fashionable look, especially for young women. The pale, translucent skin, the pink cheeks, and lips, the frail, weakened physique that they had that was really synonymous in those days with femininity, all helped to perpetuate a sort of a myth 
around tuberculosis. In fact, it was called the romantic disease. And uh, some people even emulated the disease. Um, weird, fashionable, you know, trends and things like that. But it did carry off celebrities and a lot of writers, like the Brontes, just about all the Brontes, tuberculosis took, Keats, um, Robert Louis Stevenson, Dylan Thomas, Shelley, the, it's just endless, and also some famous composers, Chopin for instance, all succumbed to it. And even in later days, the, for all its fashionable stuff, I think it worn off because Eleanor Roosevelt and Vivian Lee both succumbed to the terrible, terrible illness of tuberculosis and died in a gory spray. 